Aloha. I'm glad you're here. My name is Tony, and I'm here to support you in becoming nicotine-free, or if you don't use nicotine and you you're in the health business and you support people who are going through the transition of being a um, nicotine user, cigarette, vape, whatever it is, to being a free person, you'll get some um, legitimate ideas of how to support them and how to ease their transition. So after 72 hours any from their last use, any urges that they get 72 hours after the last one will not be because they're maintaining a drug level. It will be either habit or addiction. If it's habit, that's just a non-thinking one. So we'll talk about how to change the habits. Something will take the place of tobacco for you. And we want to get into the details for that. And um, the smoke screen, that will take as long as it takes for you to get your head screwed on straight and be happy about what you're doing for yourself. If you whine and snivel and poor me and everybody else gets to smoke but me, you know, that stuff, it'll just drag it out forever. And I was kind of like one of those people. So it, it took me, well, let me get to this. Hard times. For people who have, uh, are in the healing phase, it's not, it is withdrawal, but it's also because the body is healing itself and the mind. So, are you having hard times? If so, what you want to do is find out what's going on during that hard, those hard times. We've trained ourselves over the decades to believe that nicotine shutting down, oh, comforting, no, shutting down, deadening ourselves is the release of distress. So that's 24-7, 365 for as long, as many decades as you've been using. So it'll take a little while for you to untie those knots. Sometimes it will be hard and sometimes it will be easy. Again, it all depends on how you help yourself and your attitude. So one of the biggest killers of uh, healing is boredom. If we're used to watching television, having a beer, you know, some popcorn, um, it, 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 boredom, you know what boredom is? Boredom is a sign that says, I am boring because we're watching television and drinking beer. So what can we do instead? Oh, the other thing I wanted to ask you is, have you had a poop lately? Constipation is a healing symptom. I'm, I've been in this business, uh, tobacco cessation, for decades. I've never heard anyone talk about uh, constipation. If you don't take a poop for three days, you're going to be very, very mean. And everybody around you is going to say, oh, you know, when you stop smoking, you're really terrible to be around. Well, now that's one of the things, and the water will help that. Water is the magic bullet for this process. Aching joints. Now, with our COVID business, um, you know, you might have a bug or a flu or something, so I'm not pretending to be your doctor here. But aching joints, sore gums, any physical discomfort that you have will, beca will be because the body is flushing this stuff out of your systems and um, it will take a little while to get not back to normal because you haven't been normal since before you started. So know that whatever's going on with you, it will be temporary. I recommend that you make this a, a fun experience for yourself. Buy some flowers for yourself or your sweetheart. Put some flowers in your hair, even if you're a guy you know, anything for a little attention. Hand to mouth, hand to mouth. This thing is for your 
teeth flossing. The dentist gave me this. This is when I'm at a stop sign or a uh, signal and you know I'm sitting there for 10 minutes. Well I would smoke in the past. Now I give myself a manicure. Hand to mouth, no food. Hand to, this is a chapstick thing. Um, keep your lips moist. Dental floss. Brush your teeth after a meal and instead of putting down the fork and picking up a match put down the fork, get up from the table, brush your teeth, and feel good about yourself. Keep, keep a log, make notes. One of the things that comes with the lifestyle of a heavy, I did three packs a day, didn't want to stop, but I did, and I'm not obese, and I'm living happily ever after. Make notes. When you get a good idea, but you can't follow through on it right away. Write it down. Put it someplace that you'll see the next day, next week, whatever it is, and follow through on it. You're going to become more interesting. People are going to want to be around you. Are you going to tell people what you're doing in my classes? A lot of people say, oh no, I failed so many times, I feel terrible about myself. I'm not going through that again. I'm not telling anybody until I'm free for six months. <clears throat> you know, it really doesn't matter uh, about your success if you tell them or not. But it's really a nice compliment to your friends and family if you say, okay, I'm going to give this another shot and I would like your support. So let them feel that they're part of your success. It really is a nice gift that you can offer them. And if you fail again, at least you tried. That's better than just sitting there sucking them up like nothing's ever going to happen to you. So tell them that uh, you want to go for a walk. Tell them you want to go to the beach. Tell them you want to go to the movies. Tell them you want to go to church. Tell them that you trust them with this information and that they, you know, and if they are overboard about it, just say, hey, you know, cut me a little slack, back off. You know, speak up, take care of yourself. Plan new adventures. When somebody says, hey, do you want to learn how to crochet? Yes. Do you want to learn how to skydive? Maybe you know, we'll talk about that. Um, whatever comes up to you, for you, say yes. Because you never know what, just because you haven't done it before, that you may not turn out to love it. So be open to that. Remember, you started when you were 14 or younger. I started when I was I know, 10 or something. So uh, you've never known yourself as a full energy, healthy, happy, self-confident, proud of yourself adult. So things are going to be changing for you. Embrace those changes. Uh, seek them out. Look for them. For those smoke screen urges, what you want to do is tell a big fat lie. I did three packs a day. I would have lit one from the other if I wasn't embarrassed for people to see me do that as if they cared. But I look at, I put one out and I look at the clock and I think, well, I'll wait five minutes and then have another one. So, um, that's a lot of training. We talk about brainwashing. We've really done a good number on ourselves. At the end of the day, when you're in your bed and you're saying, thanks for you having another day, go over how things are different for you in a positive way because you don't use tobacco anymore. An image comes to me. I was single, Hollywood, living in Hollywood, you know, female, all that. And so, you know, I would like to see a good looking man. And I went through this one apartment door and the doors were great big heavy glass kind. And as the man opened the door for me, uh, you know, I was ready with a great big hello, big boy. 
and as he turned towards me, he had this Paul Mall or one of those long ones sticking out of his mouth, and you know, I had to scoot by, and I thought, damn, you know, it's nothing means nothing. Never saw that guy again, doesn't matter. But it is part of my life. And that story is very, very old, but it stuck in my mind how that changed an encounter. So at the end of the day, acknowledge your positive differences. Um, your mouth feels better. You don't, oh, they would, when I first started, they say, do you have any symptoms? I said, no, I don't have any symptoms, I'm fine. Well, once I stopped, I began to see how my body was changing. One of the things that I did, uh, I worked in an office before I answered the phone. <clears throat> I always had to clear my throat. Hello? I didn't even know that I was doing that. So watch yourself, and then at the end of the day say, you know what, I really am glad I'm doing this. And the big lie for me was, I'm glad I don't have to do that anymore. Well, that was the biggest lie I could have ever told. I love, I, <clears throat> I had one woman in the uh, group. She said, well, Tony, I'm different from these other people. I really love to smoke. I don't want to stop. I love it. Damn. We all loved it. Well, I don't know about all, but most of us loved it. We gave up our lunch money for it. We smoked on our kids. We uh, trashed the, the environment with our cigarette butts. So we all loved it. <clears throat> and those are things that we can be happy we don't have to do anymore. I used to carry a purse that looked like a saddlebag. Three packs of cigarettes, money for more matches, all that goes with it. So now I'm free. I'm, when I go out, I can carry a little purse if I want my keys and whatever else it is you carry. So be aware of the positive differences. Are you happy about what you're doing for yourself? That is the heart. That's the, the heartbeat of what's going on. If you are deprived, don't go there. If you are deprived and still would like just, I have a sister, she hasn't smoked for years. She says, oh, I, I would still like one today. Well, if that's what you're willing to live with, go for it. Not me. I'm, I'm not a victim. I'm not, I'm not suffering. Um, I've had a life. I've lost a husband. I lost my mother. I lost all, you know, I had a, a life full of ups and downs. And never, ever once did I ever think, well, this is a good excuse for just one. It doesn't have anything to do with smoking. Smoking is a habit, and it's an addiction, and it's a smoke screen. Well, when, when I lost those people, my heart was broken, and I cried. And that's an appropriate response to heartache. So if it's easy for you, it's because you have a good attitude. That's my feeling on it. And if it's hard for you, um, identify why it's hard. Is it, um, are you hanging out in the bar getting drunk and everybody around you is smoking and you feel deprived? Well, duh. Yeah, so change your habits temporarily. And you'll know when it's time you can go back to the bar. Um, you'll know that they used to ask me, Tony, when I would give the classes, they'd say, Tony, would you date a smoker? <clears throat> and I thought about it. I was single, single. I still wanted to have a boyfriend. And what I came up with was I would not date a smoker, not because he has stink breath or brown teeth or any of that, but because especially older, you know, things are starting to catch up with this. I don't want a boyfriend in a wheelchair voluntarily. 
If they get there, it's, that's the way it goes. But not because it's self-imposed, not because we spent forty or eighty thousand uh, dollars to get in that chair. You know, but more importantly, and that's down the road, and that's not going to happen to us anyway. More importantly, to date, to be in a relationship with a tobacco user, and I say smoker, but that can be vape or cigarettes or pipe or cigar or any, any delivery system, the, a chaw, whatever you, however you get it in your system. It's you know, all for the same purpose. It's all to shut us down and escape whatever's going on at the moment. Can't concentrate, and it sounds like me, but that's old age. Can't concentrate, more oxygen's getting to our brain. Can't, uh, can't sleep, we're restless, we have uh, energy squeezing out our ears. It's because everything is opening up again. Uh, when we feel like we have achy joints, that's oxygen getting to our system again. Everything will change and even your fingernails will become clean again. Now, that, I think that takes about a year for those to grow, grow out, but it, it's going in the right direction. <clears throat> if you can't sit still, don't. Stand up. Uh, do the dishes. Oh, wouldn't that be a nice treat for your sweetheart? Uh, go for a walk. Go to the beach. Throw a ball for your kid or your dog. Get interesting. Tobacco users generally sit and contemplate our navels because we're tired. It takes a lot out of the body to, to do that uh, to ourselves every day. But the more energy is a good one. <clears throat> Another uh, nice thing to consider for yourself is what is the biggest change that you uh, are experiencing already. Keep track of those. What's the biggest change you hope for? Well, having sweet breath is one of them. I used to volunteer in uh, uh, UCLA hospital in the uh, infant thing uh, department. And I'd hold this little baby, and I can't sing for shit, but um, I'd have this little baby, and I'd you know, be singing in its face, and I thought, my breath must be just putrid. And I'd say, well, it's better than not being held at all by this baby. Why, why do that to myself? I was doing a very loving act, and yet I had to come away from there feeling like two cents waiting for change. Any discomfort, notice your discomfort and, and under, decode, understand why it's there and what you can do to help yourself. And it, this too shall pass guaranteed. Walk, spend that energy, you'll feel better, you'll look better. Walk, water, and get on the other side of this as a winner. How's that gonna, when I got on the other side of my tobacco habit, I thought, you know, if I, now this is 42 years ago, I said, if I can do, I did this. I could be the first female president of the United States, and I wasn't joking. I didn't have any political interest, but that's how powerful I felt. Wow. I could do anything. If I could, if I could get, a, get that monkey off my back, and I didn't even want it off my back. I loved it. It was my best friend. Not willpower. You do not have to want to stop. Just do it, count your blessings on a regular basis, and if you do it often enough, and you don't get into that just one BS, it will be true for you. The blessings are uh, innumerable. You know, I ended up moving to Hawaii, getting married, we have a boat, we have two new cars, this, that, and that man would never have had a cup of coffee with me if I was a smoker. Just, just keeps going. Another thing is, 
have a, a quick, easy, fast mantra for yourself. I'm glad I don't have to do that anymore. Any time a positive association comes up about tobacco, about nicotine, I'm glad, stop, stop your mind. You're not 14 anymore. I'm glad I don't have to, that's not true, I do, never mind. I'm glad I don't do that anymore. And, and it will be true, it will, because it's the truth. We got into this mess because we wanted to look older. We wanted to be continental, sophisticated, uh, part of the group and all that. Well, oh, and we wanted to look older for sure. None of that is true anymore. So cut it loose, let it go. Deep breaths, three deep breaths. You know, if you um, need to lift something really heavy, you know, the, the stereotype thing of lifting a car off a child, the mother can do that. Well, we do lots of st strenuous things, and what's the first thing we do? We take a nice, deep, slow breath. Um, we're n not, n not shallow, but where you make the rib cage expand, like there's an umbrella underneath your rib cage. Deep, slow breaths. Because many times that's why we have the urge to smoke. We need oxygen. Of course, we're not getting too much, but uh, when we don't stick this in our mouth first, uh, it, it fills the need. I'm glad I don't have to do that. We don't even talk about money. I mean, we're all rich, right? We can afford to burn our hard-earned money up. One of the things, I like, um, I like being busy. So uh, I learned to crochet. Now I uh, go to Savers, buy old sheets, tear them into shreds, and I crochet rag rugs and I give them to the animal shelters, and I give them to my friends, and I've got them all over my house. And who needs a rag rug? I needed it because I wanted to be busy while I'm watching television, and I surely didn't want to be eating. See, all this is, all this is hand to mouth stuff. Have one of these in your car. Um, brush your teeth after a meal take some water. Whatever you need to do, respond to the urge. Just don't respond to it in the old way. You're a new person. Make new habits. Whatever habit you, however you use tobacco, this new habit can take its place. Is it okay if you drink a gallon of water a day? I don't know, is it? Can't. Hurt. I don't think it can hurt. Can you brush your teeth too often? Well, you know, let's not be silly about this. Buy a puzzle for when you're watching television. Distract yourself. You know, that two, I call it my two-year-old inside, but uh, it's when we were young. So get clever in your life. You'll be more interesting. If you're bored, it's because you're boring. So let your brain have fun, get creative. Somebody learned how to knit and they made a baby blanket for uh, a baby shower, gave it to a family member and of course it's treasured ever since. Do you need a baby blanket? Probably not. But it's one more creative, different, clever idea to keep your hands busy, to distract that inner, I want what I want when I want it. You don't want to be deprived because that's a lie anyway. You're not deprived of anything good. You want control in your life? Control your mind. Learn to say no. Listen to yourself. Oh yeah, do you brag? Do you know how many people that smoke would like to stop? Unless they're really very young. 
uh, the majority for sure. Most of us have tried stopping many, not one, two, three, many, many times. And that's just a terrible experience. You're suffering, you're not successful, you don't want people to know. It's just a humbug. But this time when you do it, you'll be successful and you say, wow, I am somebody. I can do it. And you are somebody. And people love you and they, you know, anybody that cares at all about you is gonna be concerned if you smoke. They're afraid for what's coming. So when you tell your friends and family, yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it my best shot. Are they happy for you? You know what? Not everybody's gonna be happy, especially your smoking friends. Nobody wants to be the last smoker in the group. Nobody wants to be the last drinker in the group. Nobody wants to swim upstream with when everybody's going the other direction. So if they're not happy for you, well, I don't know what to tell you. They don't want you to change. And when you, when, when you don't suck in your words, when you don't swallow your feelings, you're hopefully, you know, when you get stable again, ho hopefully you'll have communication skills and you can say, you know what, we need to discuss this, what you said, what you did, what you, whatever. And you can get through it together as friends and family. That's different. They're not used to that with you. They're not used to you standing up for yourself. They're not used to you saying, uh, no, that's not good for me right now. Because we're people pleasers. Uh, okay, I'll do it right after a cigarette and a cup of coffee. Okay. That's not you anymore. You're an adult. Act like it. Be generous. You have more of everything. Time. How much time did we spend? Money. Whoa. Hate to think about the money that's in those ashtrays. Energy. That's a good one for you. There'll be a healing process for your body, but you'll be younger again. You'll feel good. You'll, you know that there's such a thing as a tobacco hangover? Yeah. So when you wake up in the morning, first of all, you won't be coughing up that uh, junk, you know, the cilia that tries to clear all that crap out of your uh, lungs during the day. The smoke flattens the cilia. So the the lung the cilia can't do their job they're laying flat you know I guess I guess they're like weed or something in the wind so when you get up in the morning the cilia was working during the night and you can spit up a lot of that crapola that won't happen anymore because you're not doing that to yourself more self confidence when I was a, uh, a smoker, I'd go to a party and I had a cigarette in one hand, a drink in another, and somebody else would come over. Oh, Tony, I'd like you to meet, you know, my boss or my friend or whatever. No hands. So you get a hand back. Cool, yeah? Couldn't you use another hand? More oxygen to your brain to your muscles, to all of your organs. Learn to brag. You should be so pleased with yourself. You've, you're earning it. You're earning self-confidence because you're doing the right thing. Tell a lie. Say that you're happy with the changes even if you're not. See, I'm proud of, I'm proud of my, I'm somebody. I can do whatever I want. 
you can't you can't say those things as long as you're using tobacco because you're not in charge you're not in control I don't have any cigarettes here but they're in control I had a, a friend named Charlie that uh, I, I'm a minister too, so I married him and his wife. And uh, Charlie had had everything that go, could go wrong behind cigarettes. Go, he had cancer more than once. He had heart attacks. I, mean, I think he was about 70. At least he looked that old. He might have been 50 for all I know. But um, and he, he'd been to every program that there ever was. Nothing worked for him. So somehow he found out that I did tobacco cessation classes and he tells me, oh, Tony, I'd like to listen to your tapes. Okay. So that's the end of that. I sent them to him. So three months later, I get a call from him. He said, well, I've been nicotine free for three months. Really? How wonderful. That, that's just great. What, what did you hear, see, learn? What was the key to your mind? Uh, certainly health issues didn't uh, get his attention. So he said, well, you said make a list of 10 things that you love and 10 things that you hate about tobacco. He said, I can go for days talking about what I hate about it. They're stinky, they're dirty, they're expensive, they're antisocial. They're, they're just killers. And he said, but when it came to what I love about them, he said, I really did my best. I tried. I couldn't come up with one thing after all these decades of smoking that I loved about it. I didn't like the smell. I didn't like the taste. I didn't like the taste in my mouth for sure. So. That, that was the key for him. He understood his mind. Create and control by participating. Get active, be young again. Be, maybe for the first time, be more fun. Be pro-fun. Invite people out for lunch. Play with your kids. Foster an animal. Do something that uh, you'll be happy to talk about when you're with your group next. Play cards, learn to sew. Take the money from one pack of cigarettes and buy one or two flowers. Put them on your desk, put them in your hair. Do the hand to mouth thing. Keep, keep one in your car for sure. You know, maybe, I don't know, do cars still have ashtrays? I don't know, but ha have that hand-to-mouth thing, no calories. Are you missing your best friend? It's temporary. It's not your best friend. Change your thinking. When you hear that lie, know that you don't have to you don't have to do that anymore you can have a real best friend you can have a person you can have an animal you can have a hobby you can do all kinds of things that are your best friends allowing that I hate it when I hear people say oh I haven't smoked in uh, 10 years but I'd love one just now oh damn that's terrible why would you do that to yourself when you can cut the cord? You don't have to uh, always want. What is there to want about it? To shut down? You know, go out and mow the lawn. Do something else to shut down. Something that you don't have to be embarrassed about. If you're romanticizing smoking, how good it was, or how wonderful it tasted. Uh, 
it will lead you back to just one because life happens. Your husband will die, your wife will die, your dog will die. Life can can be a bitch. It can really it can really do a number on us. Smoking. Smoking doesn't make the tire not flat. It doesn't make us not get fired. It doesn't it doesn't improve anything. So get real, you know, really understand what's going on with yourself. You'll be so much more interesting. Stay awake. What are your new choices? Look around. Go to the library, get some books. Um, come to Alalo, make a film, write a song, write a poem. The world is waiting for you. You have gifts that nobody else does. Use them, plug in, say yes. Oh, do you smoke weed? If you do, find a way to, I don't know, gummies, something. You know, I, you can't, I can't possibly uh, say yes, stick, stick that in your mouth and smoke it. You don't want anything that's like that in your in your world right now. If weed is part of your deal, um, good, you can do that later, but not right now. Find something else. My name and email address and address, snail mail address is at the bottom of this information, these three series. Uh, please feel free to communicate with me. I'd love to support you in any way I can. I just want you to know that you are loved. People do care about you. We want you to live happily ever after. So thank you for being with me in these past three series and I appreciate you and I'm sending you wishes for the Happy, happy, long, healthy life. Mahalo and aloha.